Hi there, I'm Sean Delman. In this video, I'm going to be answering frequently asked questions about the Fujitsu ScanSnap iX1600. If you like this video and find it to be helpful, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Okay, so just to give you some context before I begin, I have a review video on the iX1600 and I get all kinds of questions that people ask me there and people get in touch with me through email and they call me. So I wanted to make this video to address the questions that people ask the most so that I could just do it in one place and provide this as a resource. So if you scroll down and look in the description section, you'll see that there's all kinds of chapter markers to the different sections. So if you have a specific question in mind and you'd like the answer, you can just go and scroll find that and then go to that part of the video. But otherwise, if you just want to watch this video straight through, you'll get all kinds of great information about the Fujitsu ScanSnap iX1600. Okay, so to start, this is the question that I've actually been asked the most, which is, do I still have a promo code with Fujitsu to purchase an iX1600 at a discount? The answer to that question is no. I did have a promo code once upon a time, uh, but that has since expired. So I found the best price that I could on Amazon and I've included a link to that product in my description section below. So if you're interested in seeing that, please click on that. But no, unfortunately, I don't have a discount code at this time, but maybe I will again in the future. Okay, so this person asked if the ScanSnap iX1600 comes with a plastic carrier sheet for fragile documents. Uh, and the answer to that is that it does not. I did an unboxing video for the iX1600 as well if you want to check out that video and I basically show you everything that came in the box and there are no fragile document covers that come with that. However, you can buy a five pack from Amazon and I've included a link for that below. Okay, this person is saying, how does the scanner know where to place the file? It just says folder and what if I want multiple subfolders like taxes, receipts, healthcare documents, etc. Can the scanner put items in the right place? So the short answer to this question is yes. Generally speaking with the iX1600, what you're going to do is you're going to make a profile for unique documents that you want to scan. So in this case, if you want to scan documents that are gonna be used for tax purposes, you're going to make a profile called tax documents, and then you can set all of your settings. You can decide whether it's going to scan black and white, duplex, where it's gonna scan the documents to, etc. And as you can see on the front of this uh, display, the iX1600 comes with all kinds of pre-installed profiles for different purposes. Uh, I didn't make this one that says business cards, this one that's for photos, this one that's for receipts. That came pre-configured in the ScanSnap Home software because the people at Fujitsu know that these are things that people are often going to want to be scanning. If you need something custom, like you want to scan a certain type of receipt or a certain type of document, all you need to do is make a profile for that and before you scan that document, you're going to select that profile and you'll be good to go. So based on what profile you select, the scanner will put that document into that folder. Uh, it's also going to use some kind of a naming convention to tell it uh, what date the, the file was scanned. And it may also give it a name based on reading um, text in the document. In the case of photographs, obviously it can't read anything in the file. You know, if it's a picture of you and your friends and family and you know, some scenery, um, it's just going to be named with some kind of a generic photo naming convention. It's not going to know what it is. But with other things, you know, if, if it's a receipt from, I don't know, a, a coffee shop or something, and if those words appear in the receipt, it can actually pull that information out of the receipt and try to give it a name that uh, provides some meaning. However, it will also just be in the folder called receipts, assuming that you use the, the receipt scanning profile. So it works pretty well. Um, I use it all the time. You basically make sure to pick what profile you're using when you're scanning something or before you scan it, I should say, and then you scan it in and you can just rename whatever you've scanned in the software. And on a similar note, this person is saying, does the scanner automatically detect the content and then file to a file that becomes searchable? So yes and no. It will search in the document for keywords. It will make the document searchable. Um, but it's not necessarily going to put it in a specific folder for that, uh, that keyword. You know, for example, if you were scanning a bunch of tax documents, it's not going to know that those are tax documents and it's not going to put that into a folder called taxes. That's the kind of thing that you will need to do manually to organize your scanned uh, files. Something else that people ask a lot is, is, is whether it's going to auto name the files. And the answer to that is sort of, um, basically based on the type of document that you're scanning, 
The ScanSnap iX 1600 will read some of the text on the document, if it's a receipt or if it's a, a letter or something like that, and it'll try to give the document a name that is based on some of the information in the file. So if you don't like that name, you can just rename the file as soon as you scan it. Obviously with something like photos, if there's just pictures of people or scenery, there's nothing for the scanner to detect, so it's not going to name those photos, you know, this is a mountain or, or this is your uncle or something like that. They're just going to be scanned as photo files. And on that note, this person is asking if you can name the files using the touchscreen on the iX1600. The answer to this question is no. So even though the iX1600 has a great touchscreen, there's no way to enter the file name um, while you're scanning. That's something that you're going to need to do using the ScanSnap Home software after you've done the scan. Depending on what you scan, it's going to try to guess a name or provide a name for you, but if you want to have the name just the way you like it, you're going to need to rename that manually. And if you want any information about that software, I also made a video about that. This person is saying, can you load 30 photos at a time and will it copy any writing on the back? The answer to this question is yes, you can load 30 photos at a time. Um, I actually went and tested it for this person just to make sure. And yes, it will copy whatever information is on the back, assuming that you have it set up for duplex scanning. So if you have any writing on the back of the photos, or if you have dates on there, or any of that information that is sometimes printed on the back of the photos, that will be picked up and you can scan that if you are scanning using the duplex mode. Okay, also in relation to photos, this person has said, how is the resolution for photos? So when this person asked me this question, I went and checked out the specs, and they are uh, 72 pixels per inch resolution, and the largest color images that it can make are uh, 3,567 by 2,361 pixels, and that produces a file size that is 1.62 megabytes. So if you're a photographer or a creative person, then this may mean more to you than someone who's not. But in my view, for the average person, the job that it does with scanning photos is just fine. Uh, I've scanned lots of photos that I've been able to just, you know, send to a family member or send to a friend so that they can enjoy the photo. And I've never had a problem with the resolution or the picture quality from uh, the scans. This person is sharing that they are older than 65 years old and uh, they're saying that it can be a bit uh, daunting and they're asking if it's my opinion that it's easy to use to create folders and, and set this up. I would say that the iX1600 is actually quite easy to use. Um, if you need any resources, I have a video that shows you everything in the box. I have a video that shows you how to set the scanner up. I have a video that shows you how to install and set up ScanSnap Home. And generally I walk you through the steps, but even without those videos, it is pretty intuitive. It is pretty easy to set up. So yes, uh, I would say that in my opinion, it's easy to get started, it's easy to use, and it should work for most people. This person has a question about batch scanning. They are saying, if I have more than 50 papers to scan, can I refill the scanner with a second batch of papers and then continue uh, to the previous batch? The answer to that question is yes, you can do that. There's a function within the ScanSnap Home software and within the iX1600 called Continuous Scan Mode. And basically what you do is you use that mode to tell the scanner that you're going to be scanning uh, groups of documents. So if you had 30 pages that you were scanning and you scanned it using continuous scan mode, after those 30 pages are scanned, the scanner is going to stop and say, have you finished your scan job? And if your answer is no, because you have 50 more documents that you want to add, what you do is then you put in those 50 documents, you scan them, and then it's going to ask again, have you finished your scan job? Now you can say yes, and those 30 documents will be added to those 50 documents, and together you will have all of those 80 pages combined into a single job. And on a similar note, this person is saying, uh, I want to ask, does it have OCR technology or searchable for PDFs? The answer is yes. So it will uh, make the PDF or make your document searchable. Basically, it'll take a paper document that has text on it, it'll scan that in, and then it'll make it so that you can use something like Control F or you can use a find command in Adobe Acrobat or in some other piece of software, and you can search for words within the document. And as far as the name of the file goes, I've already addressed that. It will try to give the document a name based on the contents of the document, but if you really want a custom name for the file, you may need to name it yourself manually in the ScanSnap Home software. Another question with respect to OCR and the software, this person is saying, I was wondering if the scanner comes with software native to the scanner 
or software that you can load onto your computer to do, do the OCR, um, even if you don't have an internet connection. So my understanding is yes, you can scan directly to your computer from the ScanSnap iX 1600 using ScanSnap Home, and it will do the OCR process even if you are not connected to the internet. Um, the software that you're going to be using with the scanner can be downloaded from the Fujitsu website and if you need any help with that I have a walkthrough video on that. But basically yes, there is software called ScanSnap Home that you are going to need to use with the software. Uh, I don't believe that you will be able to use any other software that's on your computer and that you probably are going to need to use ScanSnap Home, but uh, the software is free, it's easy to use, so uh, that shouldn't be a problem. These two people are asking about scanning documents that have staples in them or may have been stapled before. So generally speaking, my advice is that you should not be putting any document in the scanner that has a staple in it. I have in the past put a single document with a single staple through uh, inadvertently and I think that I've gotten lucky and it, it has gone through. But there's, there's all kinds of reasons why you shouldn't be scanning a document with a staple in it. So the first thing is that um, it's very likely going to jam if you try to put a document through that has two or more pages that are stapled together because uh, in order to scan the individual pages, the, the iX1600 needs to be able to pull the pages one at a time. So if those pages are stapled together, it's probably only going to be able to pull the first document and then it'll start pulling the second and it's just gonna jam. The second reason why you don't want to scan uh, a document that has a staple in it is because you don't want to damage the inside of the scanner. So basically within there, there's kind of these rubber wheels that pull the page through. And then there's also the mechanism that actually takes the picture of the page as it goes through, which is kind of a light and it's kind of a camera. So you don't want to scratch that glass and you don't want to do any damage to that, uh, those, those pieces that are inside of the scanner. So yes, if you have a document that has a staple in it, uh, you're going to need to take the staples out before you scan it through the iX1600. And sometimes even after you take the staples out, you're, you're going to need to fan the pages just to make sure that they're kind of separated so that they don't uh, get jammed as they go through or they don't kind of get stuck. So that's my advice when it comes to staples. This person is asking me about the speed test that I conducted in my review video. Thank you very much to this person. They said, great review, but was the speed test based on double-sided pages? I had neglected to mention in my review that it was actually based on double-sided pages. So what I had done is I had put 50 pages of paper through or 50 pieces of paper and both sides had text on it. So uh, 50 times by two sides is 100 pages and it scanned that in about 70 seconds. So for me, 70 seconds is pretty fast. If, um, if those would have been single-sided pages or if I would have scanned less pages, it would have been even faster. But for a scanner like this, that's for either kind of a home use or a small business, 70 seconds to scan that many pages is actually really quite good. This person is asking, does the software take the information from the receipts and categories and total them? Uh, unfortunately, the answer to this question is no. To have advanced functionality like this, you're going to need something from the Fujitsu Workgroup series, which is essentially their higher end or kind of more business focused line of scanners. The iX1600 can definitely be used for business purposes, but for the most part, it's kind of a personal scanner or a home scanner, or it's for students or for small businesses that don't need those kinds of functions. So if you're running an accounting office or a dental office or a law office or something like that, and you need these kinds of advanced features, you're probably going to need something from the next line up of Fujitsu scanners. Also in relation to the business class series of scanners, this person is an accountant and they've asked if the scanner can take information out of the documents and then put that into another piece of software through uh, a, an interface between the scanner and some kind of a, a computer driver so that it can talk to specialized software. So in relation to that, the answer to this person's question ultimately was no. The ScanSnap iX1600 does not have the kind of software or drivers that you need to make the iX1600 talk to specialized software. So if a person wants something like that to happen because they're an accountant or a lawyer or a doctor, they're going to need to look at the business class series of Fujitsu scanners. This person has a fairly technical question. They've said, how do we estimate the file size per scanned sheet, both single and double-sided? The answer to this question actually depends on what level of quality you're scanning. So if you're scanning a document at a very high quality, uh, it's going to be of a higher size. If you're scanning at medium or low quality, it's going to be a lower size. And depending on the scan job that you're doing, you, you may want to change this. You know, if you're scanning something that's very important, like a diploma or, or something that you really want to have a, a very sharp, clean image of, you may want to scan that at the highest quality. 
But for something else, if it's just kind of routine paperwork or something, you may want to scan that at medium or low quality. So based on my tests, I found that the sizes for large, small, and medium were approximately one megabyte for large, uh, 458 kilobytes for medium and 227 kilobytes for the smallest and that was done using a standard eight and a half by 11 piece of paper um, and that was single sided so if it was double sided you know perhaps the numbers would be double because you'd have two pieces of paper or you'd have you'd have two pages so it'd be about two megabytes 916 kilobytes and 454 kilobytes. So leaving the numbers for a moment, really the sizes are not that large compared to you know music files or video files or other kind of files. And especially with how advanced the hardware is on most computers nowadays, those sizes aren't really gonna be a problem for most people. However, if you are running some kind of an office or if you are gonna be scanning lots and lots and lots of documents, I can understand why you would want to know ahead of time how big the files are going to be. This person is asking, does it have duplex two-sided scan capability? Absolutely, yes. The answer to that question is yes. This is an interesting question this person has asked. How do I set the paper to scan with the document facing me exactly the way that you demonstrated in the video? And on a similar note, this person has said, Sean, when I scan seven double-sided sheets with the first sheet on the top, it placed the document on my laptop computer in reverse order with the last sheet first. Is there a setting to correct this? So when I made my review video, I was actually placing the documents facing forward just because it looked better as a demonstration and just because I wanted you to be able to see the documents. It's important to realize that the iX1600 actually pulls the documents based on whichever one is touching the scanner first. So the one that is, is closest to the scanner, the one that you've laid down onto the scanner, that document is going to be pulled first, not the one that's facing out. So if you have two pieces of paper and there's writing on both sides and you put that face down on the scanner, it's going to pull the first page first and that first side will be page one and the back side will be page two. It's then going to pull the second piece of paper and that first side will be page three and the back will be page four. And if you had more pages, then it would continue on like that. So if you were instead to put the document in facing you, it's actually going to do it in reverse order. It's going to make page four, page one, page three, page two, page two, page three, and page one, page four, which is exactly the opposite of what you want to have happen. So to fix this, all you need to do is scan your documents face down. Uh, page number one is the one that should be lying flat against the machine. And then your final page, that will be the, the final page of your scan job, that's the one that's gonna be facing you. Okay, so this person is asking, can it scan credit cards? The answer to this question is yes, it can scan credit cards. So here in this video, you see what I'm using is actually my grocery store points card, but I've checked it is essentially the same uh, thickness and the same material as my credit card. I just don't wanna scan a picture of my credit card and show that to you on uh, video. So that's why I'm using my, my points card. But yes, it does scan credit cards and it does a great job. This person is saying, I would still have to sort the papers first, right? I have many papers in a box all mixed together. I thought the scanner would automatically send it to the correct folder. Unfortunately, you do need to still organize your documents. You can kind of put them in piles. You know, these are my photos, these are my receipts, um, these are my documents. If you do them by year, that's a good way to do it as well. Um, I have a video that's showing you how to scan all kinds of things and the way that I would recommend that you organize big scan jobs. But yes, generally speaking, you are going to need to organize your documents first. Um, it's not just going to put them all in the correct place um, perfectly. However, if you do pick the correct profiles, it will put all of your pictures in a pictures folder. If you pick the receipts uh, profile and then scan your receipts, it will put those in a receipts profile. So it is doing some of the work and it is getting you part way there. But yes, you will need to do some of the work yourself to organize the documents before you start scanning. Also on the subject of software, this person is saying, besides ScanSnap Home, is there a ScanSnap receipt software specifically for receipts? The answer to that question is no, actually. There used to be separate kind of modules or pieces of software for different scan jobs, but that has now all been integrated into the ScanSnap Home software. This person has said one question, can it scan legal size? Yes, it can. Also with respect to advanced functions and sorting, this person has asked, if I were to feed and arrange various documents, would it automatically create split PDFs? For example, a two-sheet bill will be saved as a single PDF with four pages, and three-sheet letter would be saved as a separate six-page PDF. 
On the iX1600, you use the ScanSnap Home software, and it doesn't have that kind of advanced functionality to recognize what documents are within your scan job and to sort them out. Probably your best bet would just be to scan whatever document you've, you have, and then uh, finish that scan job and then scan the next one. That's what I would recommend in this situation. Also on the subject of software, this person is saying, what Windows operating system does the software require? Moving from newest to the most previous version of Windows, it is Windows 11, Windows 10, uh, Windows 8.1, and Windows 7. So if you have something earlier than Windows 7, it may not work for you. With respect to cloud computing, this person is asking if it integrates with OneDrive Business. The answer to that question is that it does. Um, I've got a walkthrough video where I show you different ways that you can use the ScanSnap Home software, and you'll see right in there that there is an integration with OneDrive. And alternately, what you can do is you can ensure that your ScanSnap Home software is configured to save your scan jobs into your OneDrive folder. That way, assuming that you're on the internet, every time you scan a document, it'll be uploaded to the cloud. That's a very simple solution and something that I do, but as I show in my video about the ScanSnap Home software, you can use that integration to go directly to OneDrive. This person is asking a networking computing question. They're saying, can you scan documents to a predefined folder on a drive over a hardwired ethernet connection? Uh, the answer to that question is yes, as long as you can get the folder to show up in your Windows Explorer and as long as you can choose that as a target within ScanSnap Home, then yes, you can save to that location even if it's on a network drive and that's where your documents will be saved. On the subject of receipts, this person is saying, I need to scan a receipt and add an explanatory notation. Will I be able to do this? So the answer to this question is kind of uncertain for me. I wasn't exactly sure how this person wanted to add a notation. One thing that this person could do is they could simply write the notation on the back of the receipt and then scan it, uh, scanning both sides, and then they would have a duplex scan with the receipt on one side and then their note on the other. Another thing that they could do is they could put their notation in the file name if, if it's short enough, or what they could do is they could open the document in something like Adobe Acrobat and I believe there's a comment command that you can use where you can basically select somewhere in the document and you can type in a little comment that will stay tagged. So um, as I said to this person when I responded to them, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. Yes, there is definitely going to be a way that you can add a notation to your receipts. It just depends on how you want to do it and where you want to do it. So a few technical questions here. This person is saying, does this scan documents to color PDF or is the PDF going to be black and white? Uh, it does support full color, so yes, uh, if you scan a page and it is in color, you can scan that to color, or you can scan it to black and white. And this person is saying, does it also print? It looks like it does not. Is there a multi-page scanner that also prints? There are other multi-units out there that can do scanning. Uh, they can do a flatbed scan, they can do a document feed scan, they can also print. But the iX1600, in my view, is just a really great uh, item to have because all it does is scan, you leave it on your desk, whenever you need to scan something, you put it in there, you scan it, you put the receipt away or the photo or whatever, and then it keeps you really organized. So it's a great thing that it's only a scanner and that it doesn't print. In my experience, sometimes when units do too many things, it may kind of do all of those things so-so and not do any of them really well. Because the iX1600 is a scanner only, it's fantastic at scanning. So this person is simply saying iX1400 or iX1600. The iX1400 is very similar to the iX1600, and if you look at this press release on the Fujitsu website, you'll see it was actually released at the same time. The major difference is that the iX1400 does not support Wi-Fi and it doesn't have a touchscreen on the front. So the idea behind using an iX1400 is if you're in a situation where you know that you're going to be scanning the same kind of document over and over again and multiple different people aren't going to use the scanner and the scanner is going to be right next to your computer, then you probably don't need the Wi-Fi and you probably don't need to be able to pick different profiles and different users on the touchscreen. However, for most people, if you're going to be using the scanner at home or in a small office, and if you want lots of people to be able to use it, and if you want to be able to change your scanning profile right on the touchscreen, that's why you're gonna to want to have the iX1600. So generally, the iX1600 is about $100 more than the iX1400, and I think that for the Wi-Fi and for the touchscreen, it's definitely worth it. But for some people, the iX1400 may be the right choice for them, especially if they know that they are only going to be scanning one kind of document and it's just going to be sitting next to their computer and they're going to be wanting to put those documents in, press the one button that appears on the front of the iX1400 and go from there. 
Uh, importantly though, the iX1400 does use the same scan snap home software that the iX1400 uses, so you still have all of the great functionality, it has the same scan speed, it's a very similar unit except, as I said, it doesn't have the Wi-Fi support and it doesn't have the touchscreen. And on a somewhat related subject, this person is saying, I have the iX500, what is the difference between ScanSnap Home and the ScanSnap Organizer? So this is actually a really tricky question and one that I can't answer for certain. If you look at this part of the Fujitsu website, you'll see that the ScanSnap Organizer software is only supported on certain models from the ScanSnap line, including the iX500 and other models. So because I've used the iX1600 and other newer models from the ScanSnap line, I've never actually used ScanSnap Organizer. However, as this person is saying, they've already been using ScanSnap Home and in their experience, it seems to be working just as well or better than Organizer. And they're wondering if perhaps there are features from Organizer that were not carried forward to ScanSnap Home. Generally speaking, in my experience, whenever Fujitsu does some kind of an update to its hardware or its software, the whole purpose is to make things better, faster, more efficient. So I'm hopeful that if there are any features from Organizer that this person has been enjoying, um, that those features have been brought forward to the ScanSnap Home software, but I actually can't say for sure. Okay, and this is one of the more interesting comments that I received. This person wrote, nice dog and pony show. Nothing critical to say about it. There's gotta be something it's lacking in features or quality. Anything, and he goes on a bit. Uh, he made a good point. He was essentially saying that in my review, I didn't suggest that there was anything bad about the Fujitsu Scan Snap. Uh, my response to him was that I didn't actually ever find anything that I don't like about the Fujitsu Scan Snap. Uh, it's it's a good price. It's fast. It's high quality. It's it's durable. Uh, it does exactly what I needed to do. It's easy to use. It's easy to set up. It looks nice. Uh, so. There's really nothing that I, I could come up with. I was trying to think, you know, what are the things that I don't like about the scanner? And, and throughout this video, I've talked about some of the features that people have wanted it to have that it doesn't have. You know, it, it doesn't print. Um, it's not a pure photo scanner. Um, it doesn't do advanced kind of integrations with other pieces of software. So there's a lot of stuff that it doesn't do, of course. But for everything that I needed to do, I think that this is a fantastic scanner and I really only have good things to say about it. But I do take this person's point and in the future when I make review videos, I'm definitely always looking for the things that I don't think are great about the particular product. And if I can't find anything, I actually go and read other reviews to find out if a lot of people have been saying, you know, hey, there's something really wrong with this product. The power adapter doesn't work or, you know, after you have it for a couple of years, it stops working or something like that. So I want to say thank you very much to this person for being so rough on me. And it was uh, it was quite the comment to receive, but uh, it's, it's part of the learning process. So thank you for that. And so with that, I'm going to leave off by showing just a couple of the really nice comments that I've received. I've received so many. Um, here's one. This person said, thank you. Your sub count should be 100K plus for the quality of your content. I pray you reach that one day. Thank you very much to this person. That's you know, one of the nicest things anybody has said to me on YouTube. And it's actually quite an amazing thing that you know, we can comment and we can all talk to each other this way. So I think that's really cool. And this person said, this is a quality review. I didn't expect that you only have a few hundred subscribers. So thank you very much for that. Ideally, that will change in the future. But, you know, making YouTube videos is actually kind of hard. There's a lot of preparation that goes into it. You know, I, I think about the video for a couple of days, you know, what kind of video I want to make. And then I've got to do all the preparation and make sure I've got the materials ready. I've got to set up my cameras and my lights. And it usually takes a day or a few days to edit uh, the, the video once I've created it. So it's there's a lot that goes into it. It's 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 a really amazing thing. And I love to do it. And I'm really happy that I'm doing it. But yeah, maybe, maybe I'll have more subscribers in the future, but uh, for now, uh, it is what it is, but I'm, I'm grateful for every subscriber I have, so thank you very much. Okay, and with that, I will conclude this video by saying thank you for watching. Uh, if you like this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you have any questions about the iX1600 that I didn't address here, you can either leave it below on this video, or you can comment on my review video, whatever works best for you. And yeah, please check out some of my other videos about the iX1600 if you want more information. I've got a review video, an unboxing video, I show you how to set up the ScanSnap Home software, uh, and I'm going to be doing videos about the best settings for the scanner and how to get the best out of the ScanSnap Home software. So I'm really trying to provide a one-stop shop for everything about the iX1600. Okay, so with that, I will say thank you one more time for watching. Have a great day. As always, I'm Sean Dillman.